I recently posted a video showing how to set up a Raspberry Pi from scratch. And for those of you who want to use your Raspberry Pi with your USB-C iPad, I pointed you at my pre-built OS images that contain the necessary configuration. However, quite a few of you have requested a video showing how to get this configuration working by hand. So in this video, I'll walk you through every configuration change you need to make to get your Pi talking to your iPad over USB-C. But more than that, I thought I'd use this opportunity to explain why we're making each change, which is useful if you want to try and port this configuration to a different OS. For example, I just ported this configuration over to Ubuntu, and I've got a video coming up on that soon, so subscribe if you want to see that. Let's dive straight in. I'm starting from a fresh Raspberry Pi OS install. If you want to know how to get here, see my previous setup video linked above. I'm connected to the Pi over SSH from my iPad, but at this point I'm connected over Wi-Fi, not USB-C. The Pi to iPad setup comes in three parts. In part one, we'll configure the Pi to enable Ethernet over the USB-C port. In part two, we'll create a network over this Ethernet connection so that the Pi and iPad can talk to each other. And then in part three, we'll configure the Pi to hand out IP addresses to the iPad over this virtual network. So for step one, we're going to start by tweaking the boot slash config.txt. And at the bottom, what we want to do is add in a line that says DT overlay equals dwc2 comma dr underscore mode equals peripheral. The dwc2 driver allows the Pi to switch the mode of its USB-C port from the normal host mode, where the Pi is accessing downstream devices like hard drives, etc., to peripheral mode, so we can configure this virtual Ethernet adapter. And we do this by adding the DT overlay equals dwc2 line. And DT overlay means device tree overlay. And you can think of this as overlaying the dwc2 device drivers on top of the standard OS kernel that comes with the Pi, but we're not actually changing the kernel. So the change we just made makes the DWC2 driver available, but it doesn't load it. To do that, we'll change slash boot slash command line dot txt. And just before root wait here, we're going to add in modules dash load equals DWC2 comma G underscore ether. And make sure you get the space in there as well. And we'll write that to disk. So now we have the DWC2 driver loaded and it's in ethernet mode. So that's enabling the ethernet over the USB-C cable. We now need to create a network interface on the USB-C port. To do this, we'll create a file called slash etc slash network slash interfaces dot D slash USB-C zero. And we'll set this to start up at boot with auto USB zero and we'll allow hot plugging so we can pull the plug out as we want. And then we'll create the actual interface. So we'll say iFace USB zero is an internet interface with a static IP address. And we want that address to be 1055.0.1. And the net mask is going to be 255.255.255.248. So you can think of the net mask or the subnet mask as being a way of controlling the size of the network we're creating with size here being the number of IP addresses available in the network. I set this to 255.255.255.248, which when combined with the IP address of 10.55.0.1, gives us an address range from 10.55.0.1 to 10.55.0.7. So with the drivers loaded, Ethernet over USB-C configured, and the network adapter configured, all that remains is to configure the Pi to hand out an IP address to the iPad when it connects. And for this, we're going to use a piece of software called DNS Mask, which will install with sudo apt install DNS Mask, and it's a queue. So to configure the newly installed DNS mask, we're going to create a new file at etc DNS mask .d, and we'll call that USB zero for the USB C zero interface. And we're going to specify, first of all, the interface. So that's USB zero. And then we want to give it a DHCP range, which is the address range we're going to hand out. So we said 10.55.0.2, because 0 01 is the is the Pi itself. And we'll go all the way up to 10. 5506, we don't need more than that. And then this last parameter here is the least time. This is how long the iPad can own its IP address before it needs to refresh it. So we're gonna set that to one hour. Next, we set DHCP option equals three. This is saying that the, uh, the Pi is the default router for this network. So when the iPad tries to resolve anything in this network, it will go to the Pi first. And then we're gonna set least file dash ro. This tells DNS mask not to write out its leases file to the SD card, which reduces wear on the SD card, which is useful for the Raspberry Pi. And we'll write that to disk. 
Now it is possible to use the standard DHCP software on the Pi for this rather than using DNS mask. I'm using DNS mask because I can use the same configuration on different operating systems more easily. To stop the built-in DHCP software from messing with our USB zero interface, we need one more setting. And we're going to do sudo vim etc dhcpcd.conf and then right at the bottom here we're going to say deny interfaces usb zero basically don't look at the usb zero interface okay all that remains now is to shut the pi down connect it to the ipad over usb c and reboot after a few minutes you'll see the virtual adapter appear in the settings app on your ipad and now we can connect to the pi over usb c connection instead of the wi-fi and that's all there is to it I hope you found this video useful. If so, please hit like, please hit subscribe, and maybe hit the bell as well if you want to. Thanks for watching.